Throughout the past year especially, we've seen an increase in, for the lack of a better word, disrespect towards animation as a whole. Overworking artists and underpaying them, disregarding animation as a genre of purely kids content, and now this HBO Max situation. Let's look into what's happened and why we're in this situation, starting by pulling back the curtain and looking behind the scenes. Despite being far more difficult than live action and just in general being a complicated and complex process, I feel that animation is looked down on. Not in the quality of the product per se, that's a subject for later, but rather the effort put into making it. Animating is a time-consuming project that takes an insane amount of effort. Animators are extremely hardworking people and they are already underappreciated. So at least they're paid well. Well, that's not great, but I'm sure they're working under good conditions, right? I guess we're gonna have to address the elephant in the animation industry, the suffering of VFX workers. Now, I don't want to act like this issue is only prevalent in Marvel, but seeing as that's the company with the most of these instances, I'm gonna focus on them most. So, Marvel has become something of a machine recently, churning out product after product as efficiently as possible. Make the most appealing film or show in the least amount of time in the cheapest way they can. Coupling this mentality with the non-unionization of VFX artists and you open the floodgates for studios overworking and underpaying artists. People are starting to notice the drop in quality regarding CGI and recent Marvel content. And crutch time is why. These shows are being pushed out as quickly as possible, leaving artists with nearly no time to rest. Animators spend countless days and nights at their desks, staying away from their families to complete the project in time to keep up with the Marvel machine. And this amount of dedication and work persists amongst the entirety of the animation industry. But these animators keep working because they truly care about the final outcome, and no one can take that away from them. That is, until... <laughs> so, in case you were unaware, HBO Max has recently removed 20 shows and 16 films from the streaming site's catalog, such as Infinity Train, OKKO, OK Summer Camp Island, Aquaman King of Atlantis, and many more. If you were unaware of why this happened, I'll explain shortly. Sometime in April of this year, Warner Media and Discovery Inc. merged into Warner Brothers Discovery Incorporated. This merger reportedly put the companies over $50 billion in debt. The removal of these projects, as well as the cancellation of films like Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Haunt, was part of a plan to trim about $3 billion from that debt. The reason why the selected projects were removed was that these certain projects were low on views and weren't being watched frequently. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the viewing rates of these shows on HBO Max, but some of them, such as Infinity Train, were not only critically acclaimed, but also popular. I mean, a large part of why Infinity Train was cancelled was because it was gaining an audience of teens and adults rather than kids. Same thing for The Owl House. Apparently, that wasn't fitting the Disney brand anymore, as it was becoming more serialized and picking up an older audience. Because even though these shows were rated TVY7, most of their audiences ended up being teens and adults. So, it's important to understand that an age rating doesn't always correlate with the target demographic for a show. Take for example, Dead End, an animated show I recently watched on Netflix. On Netflix, it is also rated TVY7, but nonetheless, Dead End feels like it was made for people above the age of 12, ranging from tweens, teens, and young adults. And I'm not suggesting that the show should be rated at a higher age rating because of things like its queer rap, I think that is all suitable for the original age rating, but I do feel like the nature of the entire show and that rap would be better enjoyed by people who are a bit older, because I think they can appreciate it a bit more. The show is absolutely appropriate for kids, I want to reiterate that point, but I don't think that that was the demographic they were aiming for when designing the show. The show has themes of running away, the follow to parasocial relationships, longing for a false home, rejection, loss, acceptance, and much more. All of which are themes that most kids probably won't understand or even notice. They'll just be entertained by the fun characters and banger musical numbers. The age rating simply describes the youngest age someone can watch a piece of content in which it will be appropriate, engaging, and at the very least comprehensible. Shows like Dead End or The Owl House absolutely could work equally fine as shows with an actual teen rating, but by simply not relying on things like swearing or suggestive jokes, they were able to make a show for teens that is also suitable for younger kids. The only element in which I could say that these shows would be better if made only for an older audience is in the horror scenes, but these shows are still pushing those as far as they can, so I really can't complain. All of these shows sometimes have dark tones and scenes, and all of them have nuanced themes and stories that resonate with older audiences far more than younger ones, but they are still completely watchable and enjoyable to kids. 
And then there are shows that are definitely just for kids, and that's fine. Same vein as some animated content being just for adults. It's insulting to generalize in any context, and it applies to animation as well. Animation, if done right, can be even more expressive than live action since you can bend the lines of realism far more and get away with more exaggerated faces or movements. But in order to do that, you have to spend more money. Because animation takes a lot of talent and a lot of time. Both of which are expensive in this industry. And as we discussed earlier, these companies don't like spending money if they don't absolutely have to. It seems that every day now a new report comes out that something is going wrong in the animation and film industry. Overworking, cancellation, stigmatization, you name it. So many artists and creators are being thrown to the curb for the dumbest of reasons, and the ones that remain are being drained of their lives to keep up. That's why I was actually happy that projects I'm really looking forward to, such as Breath of the Wild sequel and Across the Spider-Verse, were delayed so they can make the best end result they can without having to kill the creative team. I'm unsure if it's still an ongoing petition, but I'm leaving a link in the description to a petition that helps get animators better pay. I've signed in and I suggest you do as well. Thank you for watching, it means a lot to me. I have a Discord if you didn't know before, a link is in the description. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the Owl House review series, I'm just working on a very big project right now. I hope to see you soon, keep being good people, and have an equally great day. Bye!